welcome back to 8bits in the basement in october i bought an atari 2600 on ebay for about 17 euros including postage but uh, i didn't know that it was a french atari i'm calling them french ataris but actually they existed in um, they were sold in both france and also in russia because they were the two countries that used ccam so um in europe generally we use pal in america ntsc and in france and russia ccam and what that boiled down to was that in the us uh, on screen you had up to 128 colors in games uh, in the pal regions you had 104 colors and in the ccam regions you had eight colors have have a look at the system with me and uh, we'll we'll discover it together Nineteen eighty four version of the Atari twenty six hundred. It's in dusty shape, but it looks to be fairly okay. It's never ever been opened. Seals are still intact. There's a seal, yeah. But this the security seal is intact. And everything seems to be fairly okay. Now it didn't come with any controllers and it didn't come with a power supply. And it was sold as unknown, so we don't actually know if it's working at all or not. Same as the game. <laughs> because that couldn't be tested with it, apparently. Generally speaking, it should just plug into the RF on the back of an older TV and tune in and give you a picture when you power it on. Now, this doesn't use, well, it does use regular power in that it'll use 9 volt DC. And when the 9 volt DC goes in, it goes into one of those little uh, 7805 um, regulators. So it's actually using 5 volts all on the inside. So it's taken 9 volts and turned it into 5 volts and been used inside the system. But just to test it today, what I want to do is I want to get 9 volts into it. Now, your regular little... Uh, little plugs that plug into this type of device they're uh they're the usual little fellas little guys like little fellas like these okay little barrel little barrel jacks and you've got an interior and an exterior and generally speaking these days the interior is positive and the exterior is your negative or your ground but this this isn't the type of of connector it needs at all the atari for some reason in these earlier versions they decided to use a mono jack like an audio jack for a pair of headphones mono audio jack so what i'm going to do is i'm going to splice this stereo headphone jack so generally you've got your your ground and you've got your stereo left or right and or your audio left or right audio left or right one or the other i'm not sure and um, with the mono all this area here is ground and this area here is just your your mono your mono audio so that's what this basically uses it's using ground here but it's supplying your nine volts through the tip so what i'm going to do is I'm going to cut this cable a little more, expose the wires inside, and I am going to, for the intern, just to try, I'm going to connect it to this guy, which is a little 9 volt, 9 volt battery connector. I just want to see if using Circus Atari, I can get an image on my TV screen. And if I can do that, I'm happy enough. What I'll do then is I'll open it up. We'll have a look on the inside. We'll clean it up, make it all look nice and clean. Put it back together. Check again, it's still working. We'll be happy enough. And I'm going to see if I can power it on using this. Splice to this in conjunction with this. And see if we can get it working. See if we can get a picture on the screen. So let's get rocking. Okay, so I'm going to make up a test, a test uh, power supply for an Atari 2600 
using a universal power supply and headphone cables. Now, this lad takes positive and negative the cable. I need to be positive tip, negative, negative barrel. Strip and strip. My ground joined together. I'm going to put a bit of flux. I'm going to put a bit of solder and everything and then figure out what's what. Now, so let's see where we are now at this. Uh, find the tip. First off, we'll find the tip. So the tip is little greenish blue wire. The middle part. Is this red wire just keep in mind that if you make up a cable like this yourself the color coding on the cables may not always be the same in this case I found that the tip was blue but if you're making the cable the color coding could have changed and it could be any other color so we're going to connect our little red which corresponds to the middle and ground these two together so the red this cable here is going to be branched in to ground like this. It's easy enough to check polarity on the connector with a multimeter. Just make sure that the black probe is connected to COM. This way, when you touch two points and obtain a reading, if the reading is positive, the black probe is going to ground. If the reading is negative, the black probe is going to positive. So that way you can always tell which end is positive and which end is negative. So the story so far is that we tried to make a power supply using a nine volt battery and a headphone jack. It didn't work. Then what I did was I dismantled that cable and plugged it into a nine volt regulated power supply. And I don't know if it's powering on or not, I don't know for sure. I still haven't gotten any kind of signal, but when I moved the system back over here, what I did notice is that this cable is frayed in a number of places. Here, for example, there's a, there's a, a big fray on the cable right here. I don't know. Yeah, you can see it there. There's a fray on the cable there and there's another one is well not too far away. It's very possible, it's very, very possible that this system is working fine, but uh, it can't send the signal to the TV because the cable is frayed. Now, luckily, as far as I know anyway, uh, these cables are easily changed because on the inside, it's just a plug into a socket. And as I have a number of these, cables because they're pretty much used for everything back in the 1980s connect like videos to RF ports and all that kind of stuff I've got a couple of these knocking around so what I'm going to do is because I, I I need to change this what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up and I'm going to change that cable out while I'm doing that I'm going to supply it with its 9 volts and we'll check and see if the regulator is indeed supplying 5 volts to the rest so of the system it's starting by opening her up anyway so from what I've seen, there are only four screws in these, two diagonal screws and then there's two regular one which is covered by a warranty seal because it was never ever opened. <laughs> we'll start down here and we will open her up. Okay, got the 
supposed to unbuckle it. One, two are out. And now we will go open the fifty. And that's voided our warranty. So there we go. Remove these two screws. They look to be exactly oh no, they're not the same. All screws are not the same. Okay, he doesn't want to come out, but it's okay, he can stay. He can stay there for the moment. Now normally this should just slide off, I believe. We have to turn this over in order to slide it off. And this, here we go. This is the fellow we want to change out anyway. So we can take this board off in its entirety. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce 9 volts and I'm going to see if this is I'll out getting 5 volts and turn it on. And now I'm getting 5 volts 7 volts coming in and get him 5 volts going out. Looks to be good. Okay. Now, so we're set up back over here. Um, and after plugging a new cable in into the TV, it is back. Should we turn on? Sorry. Turned on. Auto tuner TV set. And there we go. Auto tuner on Seacam this time. Oh, we've got an image. No, there was a signal telling me no signal. There we go. Well, we seem to have a working Atari. Now, so I've washed the case. I just used um, just water and a toothbrush and it came up fairly nice. I need to wait for it to dry. However, this guy here, I am going to clean with a paintbrush. Now, it has never been used, but I know people say, oh, would you? Uh, anti-static and all and that's correct there are issues with anti-static there's also issues with um some of the hairs from the paintbrush being left and causing a short somewhere so what i'm going to do is i'm going to lightly clean it off um i don't think it'll pose a problem i've done it in the past with with other boards and systems and it hasn't posed a problem so i'm just going to uh, i want to give it all uh, a good brush off this little screw and the 
this, this on heat sink. Yeah. And there we go. So we want to clean the back of that. Now we want to clean this guy. And we'll apply some new thermal paste. Now, so I'm just going to use a little piece of cloth to remove the thermal paste from this comes off easy enough and we will remove the channel paste I'm going to dab a little on here doesn't need an awful lot dab a little on like that and Let's just add on nestling and we'll squidge it on the back here. Pass a little bolt and bring the whole lot down. And let it go through, you can see. It's after smudging all around, which is which is good. And this goes here. Here we are right here and I apply my little washer and after the knot I just adjust this a bit and I give it a little tighten. Now, ah, so there we go, new thermal paste applied. In order to close it back up, this part sits in first at the back. All of the little tabs go into their respective holes, slots. And down voilà. there we go Lovely, almost like new. The other side of our board. Here we are. In true. And this then we close back. Right, we've got self tabbers, these lines that go at the front, and then we've got these lines which aren't really self tapping, they've got this little little groove in them, and they go at the back in diagonal faces. Now, now. to the power the telly turns on circuit satari cartridge is plugged in with label facing away and on and we have an image and it's in color here is the Seacam PCB. We've got the same chips as we have on, on any other revision of board. We've got our RIA chip, we've got our processor chip, and we've got our TIA chip. Now, either of the two TIA chips that were developed and made can be used in this board, either the NTSC or the PAL. The reason being that Atari didn't see 
any financial gain by making a CCAM version of the TIA chip as the market for CCAM was so small. France at the time, they insisted that any products that were connected to a television had to produce a CCAM signal. Uh, so Atari found a way around this by converting a PAL signal or a signal from their TIA chip into CCAM. And the offshoot of that is that this TIA chip is connected up in a different way than uh, TIA chips in, in the NTSC and PAL systems were connected up. First of all, the color pin isn't used. It's not connected to anything. So effectively what you end up with is a TIA chip that's spitting out a black and white black and white signal. And um, what they did was they took that blank black and white signal and depending on the various levels of gray within that black and white signal, these chips produce a color that can be spit out on screen. So you end up with eight colors instead of the 128 in NTSC and 104 in PAL. Um, this here is the same processor, obviously, as in any um, Atari system. This one is uh, 6507. It's the same processor that was used in the Nintendo, as far as I believe, the Nintendo Entertainment System. And it was used in one or two others as well. It's a little brother, if you like, of the 6502 that was used in the Commodore 64. And um, the 6507 has 13 address lines, whereas the 6502 had 16. Uh, so it's a cut down chip. It's a, it's, it's a less expensive chip, if, if, if you like. On the silicon level, it's exactly the same on the inside, but the pins that are connected to the silicon, uh, some of them aren't connected and therefore you only end up with 13 address lines. Uh, the other thing about this of interest, I suppose, is that the memory, the memory I believe is integrated into the Riot chip here, which is, um, which is Atari's own proprietary gate array, uh, if, if you like, and it controls, um, it, it, it does, the function of many chips on the board while only using one chip so it's 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 again it's a bit like the spectrum had its own ula and the um the acorn electron had its own ula this here has the right chip and um, it's got 128 bytes of ram so that's not 128 kilobytes the commodore 64 for example had um, had 64k 128 bytes is one eighth of 1k so this had one eighth of one K of RAM and uh, pretty much what it did with that was it would it would keep scratch data and stuff like that. So my understanding of scratch data in layman's terms really is if you're playing a game and you've got three lives and you, you lose a life, it remembers you have two lives and there are whatever, you know, for whatever that kind of information that's sort of is very, very little. Um, that's pretty much it. Like I said, you've got black and white signal converted into color here and then spat out. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, to convert it to a PAL or NTSC system, you would think, well, all you have to do is join. Well, in fact, there's quite a bit of work that needs to be done. Um, this uh, TIA chip has two PAL pins, uh, PAL I and PAL S, I believe. One of them is tied to ground so effectively disabled and the other one is run out to a completely different crystal um, and and basically you would need to rebuild uh you'd need to lift this chip out uh put in a socket bend some of the pins up place it back in the socket and then you would need to run out and um, you'd need to build sections of the board that could connect to those pins you'd be you'd be really in a way you would be building like 35 percent of the board again and bypassing all this so um it's not really worth doing but uh there you go that's a general overview of the uh ccam ccam atari well yeah. so there you go that's what i have to offer in the video today um the system was taken apart was cleaned up was put back together and we had a faulty cable a uh, tv cable which meant that it was very hard to tune in, but not impossible. But the other problem was that it's a CCAM system, which I didn't realize until a little bit in, even though it was marked on the PCB, because, well, I, I didn't really look at it very well. And um, that meant that I had to set the TV, as the TV that I had, um, I had to set it to CCAM, whereas it was on PAL, because nearly everything is PAL. 
and uh, yeah that's why I, I had problems chilling it in but now well the system works so um, what's left to be done is in another video I'm going to make paddles because I, I have a copy of Circus Atari but I don't have any way of of controlling it of playing it so um, I'm going to see if I can make up a cheap pair of paddles and uh, yeah, I, I hope you'll join me for that. So I will talk soon. Bye-bye.